Hello everyone. So in this video we could to talk about sets in Python. So let us begin. So we'll be talking. Uh, we'll first see the introduction. Then we'll be talking about sets, the items in the set, uh, using the set constructor, how to access these items from set, how to update a set, then join set and the different methods which are available in Python for sets. So let us begin. So uh, like we have seen in the previous videos for tuples and for list, uh, there are four uh, collection data types. Uh, this list, tuple, set and dictionary. So we have already seen list and tuple and today we are going to see set. So set is used to store multiple values in a single variable. It is a collection which is uh, unordered and unindexed. So it is created using curly brackets. So uh, in this example, if you see uh, we are storing, we are using a variable named as this set and then we are storing apple, banana and cherry in it and then we are just printing it. So set items are unordered, unchangeable and they do not allow duplicate values. We can also add or remove items from a set. So even when I say that set items are unchangeable, it means that uh, it does not mean that you cannot update the set or it does not mean that you cannot remove or add any new values in the set. What it means is that uh, you cannot change one value inside it. For example, if you see in this example, uh, this apple. So now if you want to, let's say, update it and if it was a list, you could have just used the index number and updated what is being stored over there. But since they are unordered uh, items in set, you cannot change this value. It is there, you can either remove it or you can add new values, but you cannot change apple over here. So that's what unchangeable is. However, like I said, you can add or remove items and set items can be of any data type. So note that the values true and one, similarly false and zero, are considered as the same value in sets and are treated as duplicates. So like I said, uh, sets, cannot contain duplicate value so if you are writing true as well as one so these are duplicate these will be considered as same and will be considered as duplicate so set length to get the length of uh, a set we just use the len method we have already seen that uh, earlier for other collections also now uh, for set constructor so in this slide you saw how you can define a set you can use the curly braces or there's one more method where you can use the set constructor and uh, this is how you define it so you use round brackets so make sure to use the double round bracket if you do not use the double round bracket uh, you will get a different data type or you might get an error so uh, to use the set constructor you have to use double round bracket you have to write the word set and then you have to write your items in it separated by a comma then you can just print the set so to access the set items uh, you can simply use a for loop for example for x in this set and then whatever you want to do like let's say printing that uh, specific item now to check if an item exists in a set we have already seen this earlier as well you use the in keyword so it's the same for sets as well uh, where you can for simply you can just like print let's say print banana in this set since banana exists uh, this will be printing true so that will check if uh, it is there in the set now to update a set uh, you can add an item by using the add keyword or the add function or you can remove an item by using the remove function and you can also add different sets so if you have two different sets and if you want to add the second one to the first you can use the following syntax so this set dot update and tropical so this set will be updated and the second set will be added into this now of course if there are any duplicate elements it will be only stored once in that set since uh, items in set cannot store duplicate values and similarly just like you can add sets you can also add any iterable uh, for example list or tuple and you'll use the same function that is dot update 
so that is how you can uh, update sets now before we go to join sets uh, let us just uh, see all of this in the form of code so we'll be using the same google collab file which we have been using in this series and first let's define a set let's say set 1 equals to uh, let's add a b c and d so now if i want to print the length of set 1 So I'm getting four because it's four items. Now what happens if I try to add a duplicate? Let's say A, B, C, D, and again a D. So you'll still get the length as four because when you're defining the set, it'll insert A, it'll insert B, C, as well as D. And since it does not allow duplicates, this D will not be added as an extra item because D already exists. You can also try adding any other duplicate, let's say A, since A already exists. So again, the length is shown as 4. But as soon as you add any new item that which is not existing, let's say E, so the length will increase to 5. So that is how you define a set uh, and also see the length. Now, uh, we saw one more way to define a set using the set constructor. Let's say set 2 equals to set and we take double brackets say apple banana and shell so i can just print set 2 so there it is now what happens if you remove the double braces so you will get an error so it is important to understand that you need two round brackets this first round bracket is used by the set constructor and the inner round bracket is uh, basically you know uh, it's a collection uh, where you are having multiple values and you're storing it in like even if you're using one variable to store it you use braces right so you're using this as a whole and you're converting it to set so that is how it is done using set constructor so next we'll see how to access set items so let's say for x in set 1 we will print x so like you saw our set 1 has the length 5 which means 5 unique elements are there in set 1 which is a b d e and c so you might think that why is this order in this way whereas we had added c first but c over here is shown as last so the items in set are unordered that is why it can come in any random order so a b d e and c however it is printing all the unique elements in the set and if you see the length also it was 5 so that is how you access the items and to check if an item exists, you can simply, let's say, print a banana in set 2. So, because it does exist in set 2, we'll get the output as true. And let's try it with set 1, you'll get it as false because banana does not exist in set 1. So that is how you can check uh, for items in the set. Now uh, we also saw that uh, set considers 0 and 0 as false and true as 1. So what happens, uh, let's say if I am trying to define a new set. Set 3 equals to say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if I print set 3 so it shows 0 1 2 3 4 5 now if I add true at the end it will still show 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 because true and 1 is considered as the same now if you print the length also it will be 6 
true will not be considered. Similarly, even if I write false and true both actually. So both of these are not considered and uh, the length also if you check it will still be 6 because false is the same as 0 and true is the same as 1 uh, for sets. Now let's see how we can update a set. So basically add and remove first. So to add an item let's say set 3 dot add and I'll add the number 6 and then I can print set 3. So now 6 has been added to the set. Similarly I can also remove let's say set 3 dot remove and let's say I want to remove 0 and then I'll print set 3. So that has removed 0 and the set length is now 6 again. It had become 7 once we added uh, the number 6. So that is how you can add or remove elements in a set. Now you can also add two different sets. So let's, uh, let's add set 2 and set 3. So let's say set2.update set 3 and then we'll print set 2. So now set 2 has been updated and set 3 has been added into it. So we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 originally. Now this banana, cherry and apple also inside. Now you can also add any uh, iterable like I said. Let's take a list. List 1 equals to let's say ABC and we have let's say 10. Now if I want to add this also to set2, two, let's say set2.update and I'll add list1. Then we'll print set2 again. So now set2 has been updated yet again and ABC has been added as well as the number 10. So that is how you can uh, add sets or any iterables to set. Now let us go back to our presentation. So let us see how to join sets. So suppose you have two sets and you want to join them. Uh, you can simply write set3 equals to set1.union set2. So that is how uh, you'll be able to join two sets. Now it is uh, same as update. The only difference is the union method will return a new set and because it is returning something you have to store it in a new variable and it will contain all the items from both the sets. Whereas the update method, it will insert the items from the second set into the first one. So even though uh, both of them will result in the same looking set, uh, the difference is one will assign it to a new variable, one will, that is one will return it and the other will just update one of the set from those two, the first one. And both union and update will exclude any of the duplicate items. So you must have also study, studied about union in set theory. Uh, and it's basically the same over here. Now to keep only the duplicates, uh, you will have to, okay, so again in this now, uh, you have two methods. One is intersection underscore update and one is intersection. So to keep only duplicates, we use the intersection method and the intersection update method will keep only the items that are present in both sets whereas the intersection method will return a new set. So uh, in this first example, this first image, x will be updated with the intersection of y and in the second image if you see, uh, intersection of the set x and y will be stored into a new variable z. So that is how you can keep duplicates only. So for this basically z will contain apple only since both the sets contain apple that's common and only that will be stored in this new variable or updated into x for this first command now if you want to keep all but not the duplicates 
So that is basically uh, the symmetric difference. Now once again, if you are familiar with set theory, it will be much easier for you to understand this. Or you can also read about it and it will take hardly 5 to 10 minutes to understand all of this. So if you want to keep all but not the duplicates, you will use symmetric difference. And just like we saw for uh, intersection, you have two methods. One is update, which will update in the first set. And one is just intersection, which will store into a new variable. Similarly, again for symmetric difference, there is symmetric difference update and symmetric difference. Now, uh, set methods. So we saw the add method. The clear method will remove all the elements from the set. The copy method will return a copy of the set. Then we have difference, difference update, which we saw again. Uh, we also have discard method, which will remove a specified item. There is intersection and intersection update, which we again saw previous. There is is disjoint, which will return whether two sets have an intersection or not. Similarly, there is is subset, is superset, uh, returning if like if uh, one set is the subset of another one or the superset of uh, other set. And then we have pop and remove. Pop will remove an element from the set, and remove will uh, remove like it removes a specified element again. So symmetric difference and symmetric difference update again we saw. We also saw union and we also have seen update. So there are many methods in sets and uh, this video is just about the basics. The rest of the methods you can uh, try out on your own. So uh, let us see what we have uh, learned so far from the presentation and uh, we'll try to write the code for it. So now let us define let's say set one again. So set one is A, B, and C, and we'll define set two again. Set two is let's say one, two, and three. So to get the union, we can directly print, or we can also store it in a new set. Let's say set three equals to set one dot union set two and then print set three so we will get a b c one two three uh, yes the order will be different because uh, the items are unordered but the length is six and all of the elements from each set are present now if there is a duplicate so it will still be the same output again because the duplicates are not stored, there's only one of each. That is, uh, unique elements are stored only. So that is how you can join two sets. Uh, now to keep only duplicates, uh, let's say set one and set two have one duplicate, which is A. Now, if you just want to extract the duplicates from two different sets, then you can directly, let's say, print set one. dot intersection y sorry not y it should be set to so that will print the duplicate element and this intersection method returns another set now if you want to update it in the first set you will have to use set one dot intersection underscore update and then set two so that will update it in the first set itself so now that it has updated you can print and check let's say print set one so set one now only has a However, I'll run this code again because we need set1 to have more elements so that we can try other uh, methods also. So I'll run this again. Now set1, if you print it, it will have a, b, and c again. So that is how you get the uh, intersection or you keep only duplicate values. Now if you want to keep everything but duplicate values, which means you basically want to remove the duplicates, you can directly print uh, set1 dot 
symmetric difference and you have set to so like you can see that it is printing everything apart from the duplicate that means a is duplicate so that has been removed now just like symmetric difference there is also symmetric difference update just like you had intersection update and that will update in the first set itself so that is it from this video and there are many other set methods which you can uh, explore by yourself and you can try it out and that's it so thank you for watching